Hello and welcome to another IC3D tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you the connection between IC3D and PAX and how you can use PAX alone to correct your artwork from an IC3 file. Now to get started you're going to want to have your bottle and shrink wrap pre-made using IC3D's shrink wrap template and from there you're going to want to save that out as a .ic3 file. Close IC3D and open PAX. Once PAX is open, you're going to want to go up to File and Open. Navigate over to the file that you have your IC3 file saved, and you're going to want to go down to the bottom right where it says PDF Files, and just check either IC3D files or All Files. I'm going to do IC3 and I'm looking for the one we just saved. This will not only open the artboard that was created using the shrink film, but it will open a 3D view of the model itself. And here we can make it rotate, or we can have it synchronize, which means whenever I change anything about the art, it will update automatically. So let's go ahead and apply our artwork by going over to File, and we're going to insert a PDF. This PDF is going to be our art. And that should place right into the center. From there, as you can see, it's going to automatically update across to our 3D view. So we can take a look at which areas we'd like to correct. Now this side panel is looking a little, little worse for wear and maybe even this back panel. And definitely this small strip up here at the top. Once we've found the areas we wish to correct, all we have to do is select it per object, not the whole art itself. This allows for better corrections and more accurate results. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go into my PDF layers and I'm just going to uh, lock the background so I don't grab any of the pieces over here as I do my side panel. Let's zoom into the side panel. Let's just grab the panel by selecting it and then go up to pre-press, warp, and from here you're going to want to select the asymmetric warp. It looks like the small bottle with a handle. We're going to keep this at 100% as that's 100% corrected while zero would be the original artwork, no corrections at all. From here, I'm going to hit warp. And as you can see, that should go through and warp my artwork. Now it will not only warp the art for us, but we can then see the result real time in our 3D viewer. So we can make any changes or maybe drop the distortion a little if it's a slightly too distorted. Let's go ahead and move to the back. Let's go down and just use fit to artwork so I can see it all. And then we're going to zoom into the art and grab the whole panel. From here, we're warping it once again at 100%. And there it goes. And again, we should see that instant result right onto our 3D viewer. That's looking great. And then from here, we can work on that final bit, the right at the top. And that's the easy pour spout. Let's just again grab what we need and warp it using our warp option. There we go. Now that looks a little too blown out, so I'm going to go actually go down to around maybe 75%. And let's see how that looks. Now, beforehand, you are going to want to undo this as it's going to apply the 75% on top of what we've already applied. After you undo, hit warp again at 75%. And that's looking much better. Excellent. Now from there, we are ready to go. So we can go ahead and fix any other pieces of art that we need to, or we can send this off to the press to be printed. 
And of course, you can also save this out on our 3D viewer over here as a export directly to IC3 or save it as an IC3 file, or you can view it directly in PAX using the 3D turnaround. A lot of flexibility comes when using PAX and IC3D together. As you can see, both applications are wonderful for not only the creation of the 3D model, but opening up and making sure that all of your artwork is corrected and ready to go. Thank you so much for joining me, Adam Chop, as we went through IC3D and PAX connection together and warping artwork and ultimately getting a very nice artwork corrected piece off of our IC3 file.